I'm a man of God too. That's what we say. That's the deception that keeps us small. Preach a very simple message. And you know, to those of us that God has helped a bit with the spirit of revelation, there is this pride. We usually will not listen. If it's not deep, I don't listen. Unfortunately, Renard Bonke shared a simple story. And he was about to take water and then minister the baptism. That was the first time in my life I had a visionary encounter of the Holy Spirit. Something happened to me in that meeting that I would never forget. Today he's gone to be with the Lord. If I had stayed in my pride, that man would have gone today and I would not receive anything. Please listen to me. When you receive, it does not demean you. You are only equipping, in fact, your openness to the body of Christ is proof that you really love your people. Because it means you want to bring dimensions to them. Now you see what Reverend Akila is doing. By creating a platform, even though it is house on the rock, but you know that this program is not really house on the rock. This is the body of Christ. Please hear me. Men and women of God, especially, respectfully speaking, we must get to a point where we have a healthy acknowledgement and a communication of mutual honor for the sacrifices of one another. It is true that we are not at the same spiritual level. It is true that our hunger and our press is not the same. But we must have a healthy regard. Are we blessed? A woman i'm sure she may be here yesterday after the service while i was in the office she came to greet me with her two children two adorable children and i have never seen two children memorize scripture like this in my whole life she was memorizing the scripture with them they were praying for me the children i said what is this i know how long it took me to learn those scriptures and those kids were effortlessly reciting it someone is here flogging their child every day to learn john 3 16 and the child is not getting it whereas there is a grace that resides in a woman that through honor and discernment you can receive when you learn what i'm teaching you tonight no challenge will live in your life for a long time because you will search for there has to be a grace in the body of christ that can solve that problem if your problem is prayerlessness there is a grace already assigned i know what many of us want we want the credit to our name we want god to give you directly so you don't give credit to anyone but even if you are saul and you meet jesus you will still go to the house of ananias for the continuation of your training not even an encounter with jesus will ignore an encounter with the body of christ for this cause many are weak for this cause many are sick for this cause there are people who have died today who should not have died don't feel bad had they met the graces assigned to them there are weak people who are not supposed to be weak today there are politicians who should never be down if only they could discern Let me answer one question and we'll pray. Let me tell you why it is difficult to receive. And I will start with an admission. The admission is that the vessels that carry this grace are very, very ethen and imperfect. This is where the problem is. Because of the imperfection of the vessels. Are we together now? Yes. Moses was a temperous man. I hope you know that. Very temperous man. Yet the spirit that was in him as a stammerer came on 70 elders and none of them could keep quiet. Yet that's what was in one man and he was quiet. Part of what was on him came on 70 elders and they could not keep quiet. Yet one man was carrying that grace. Elijah was an angry man you need to really clap for elisha and don't blame the sons of the prophet the sons of the prophet were being mentored by this harsh guy for disturbing him fire comes down what kind of a man is that god can't you replace him and use another one the strange thing about god is while you are 
hoping God does not use those vessels he has covenanted that I will still continue so if you must if you must get onto that dimension you must tap into that grace why would God not replace Elijah <laughs> if you want to be Elijah get ready for insults from Elijah and be prepared to enjoy it the Bible may not record it but we are matured enough to know that you cannot work with Elijah it's not just good morning every day the sons of the prophet were angry and Elijah said do what you would do I will still follow quietly so when the mantle came upon him he said finally I have it what do you want a man is living you are living and then you're the one person who had stayed with you shouldn't you be wise enough to say I love you my dear son you have served me he said quickly I'm going what do you want a double portion of your anointing you have asked a hard thing would not you be angry and go back and say carry your grace and, and go to heaven with it the mystery of receiving from the body of Christ I wish I had time is hidden in the riddle of Samson Samson was going to go and see a woman and while he was going a lion attacked him is that true and he tore that lion with his bare hands and then after a week he was passing again and he saw something mysterious he saw that bees left every tree and came to a carcass and put honey there why will bees not look for fresh trees with green leaves what are bees looking for that they come to a carcass and put honey there so when he met the philistines he said i have a riddle out of something strong has come something sweet and the people could not they could not unravel it let me tell you the mystery of receiving from the body of christ you will only receive the honey if you can endure the smell of the carcass even though the carcass smells the honey is right there if you can endure the smell of the honey hear what i'm telling you this is why many people do not receive oh this pastor is a tribalistic man i agree you are not wrong but that's too small a reason to allow your destiny suffer that much adaptation is proof of honor you must learn the stamina of endurance is the reason why many young people never receive mantles because they want to be successful at their own terms listen to me many of us young people today have not been able to receive graces from our fathers even in the flesh because of our anger my father was a sad person but he was sad and still wise in his lifetime you saw his honor and yet we cannot endure and receive it we live in a generation that is obsessed with pleasure we want success to come and meet us at our own terms no sir your prayer is the person who serves your food every day called mama you have traveled to lagos you have traveled to ghana you have traveled to london looking for an anointing that mama has right in your house because she's not educated that woman wakes up 12 o'clock every day to pray till 2 she has taught it for 25 years that is more than physical discipline there is a grace that makes it happen now you are a preacher and you sleep and wake up by 9 o'clock in the morning even if you sleep by 8 you will still wake up by 9 it's an attack if you go to mama and say mama even though i know i'm a celebrity man of god but i come to you recognizing that the grace i'm running around looking for you may not be educated but you have this grace mama can look at you and say my son i met a missionary in 1975 i cooked food for him and he blessed me he said you will never go down spiritually and that's the grace speaking do you know there are mantles and anointings that swim across our environment every day but our pride and lack of discernment is what has kept us small there is no reason why anyone in church should be prayerless 
there are enough graces and unctions and mantles to solve that problem if you have the opportunity to discern there is no reason why anyone in this state should be mediocre there are exceptional people that have been raised from the plateau to the ends of the earth have you discerned their grace there is no reason why people should be begging for food up and down there are people veterans in business men and women who understand the economic system of the kingdom i'm not just talking of people who are carnal no 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 for this cause many are weak this is the reason why there is a lot of prayer maybe in your assembly but there is no establishment because it is a prayer ministry but there is no communication of doctrine you have ignored the teaching ministry and laughed at teachers and says because they don't have signs and wonders that's why they teach from morning till night now you see people pray and there is a side effect to praying without the word because you'll be exposed to the realm of the spirit then you will interact with all kinds of spirits your hunger will drive you to the realm of the spirit but the word of god is not there to coordinate you so you find out that people fast for seven days and return back with strange spirits they fast for seven days and they admit them in jute because they are supposedly praying in tongues without control it is doctrine that gives balance to spiritual experiences what do you benefit from your encounter with the body of christ please sit down we have to wrap up i forgot this a morning service this kind of teachings happen with night vigils three or four hours of solid prayer another two or three hours of solid word you back it up with a serious demonstration of the spirit and even the gate of your destiny knows that you spend time with god we must trust God for grace to take God seriously. In the name of Jesus Christ. Number one. The first blessing. The first benefit. Of encounter with the body of Christ. Thank you gentlemen. Thank you so much. Is access to the multifaceted dimensions of God. Write it down. God operates dimensionally. Acts chapter 18. Please give us the last four verses. Acts chapter 18. Access to the multifaceted dimensions of God. God operates dimensionally. The dimension you have may not be all there is. He is not only Rapha, He is not only Jaira, He is not only El Shaddai. He's not only seeking, there is more. Even in heaven, he said, come up hither. There is still room for more. Are we together? Praise the name of the Lord. Okay, you just write it. This was the story of Apollos. The Bible tells us that Paul haven't passed through the upper coast. Well, he came and met this man in Ephesus called Apollos. Are we together? And the Bible says he was mighty in scripture. He was eloquent he was fervent in spirit but he knew only the baptism of john now if you if you were to be the member of apollo's church the only thing you would know is the baptism of john not wrong but incomplete so here's how the devil has deceived us we believe that single-handedly we are the ultimate custodians of all there is in god and we discourage people from embracing from the body now listen to me let me balance something i know that administratively and from the standpoint of fatherhood and leadership as a spiritual leader you owe a responsibility to make sure your people are secured your people don't vacillate around into confusion you have a responsibility john 17 jesus was praying and he said all you have given me i have kept and none is lost except the son of perdition he had to explain why john why judas was out of the 12. jesus had to give the father an explanation what happened to judas so as a man of god it's not just to say okay because the body of christ is there so you allow your members and your people to just vacillate and roam around no no 
however there must be an unashamedness whilst doing ministry or leadership or business to let people know sincerely that i continue to be an effective servant of god growing and exploring the riches in christ however i admit to you that all i have is not all there is there are dimensions beyond this horizon and that i will not under guidance i will not hinder you from tapping into those dimensions it is selfish to allow your ego stop people from tapping into other dimensions of supply in the body and it is dangerous to consciously or unconsciously make yourself the ultimate reference no sir the best of us is only an effective member not no one individual is the body of christ house on the rock today has been used by god as that donkey that we have all had that access to and i am so honored and in the secret and in the open sincerely reverend akila has said it again and again that this is beyond the body of christ that's why they took the pain to go through all of this and set up the stage so that the body be blessed i have preached there are few churches in this nation in terms of denominations that have not preached in and sometimes i have my personal convictions as a person doctrinally speaking and based on my work with god however i submit to you and i say it with all humility there is no city no denomination that has consciously or knowing me say no 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 we're not interested in you it doesn't matter which one do you know why because when you approach people with honor knowing that you acknowledge there is a dimension of god they have they will also reciprocate by respecting what you carry but when you downplay people imagine that i came into this city with a mentality to outshine as though the men of god in this city are just playing games you will be disappointed even though you love me we never come into cities to push down and demean what god is doing rather we come by the privilege of the election of grace to be support systems to lift the hands of those who labor in doctrine day and night unity does not mean teaching the same thing that will never happen based on our work with god we have been exposed to different levels of light but is it possible that a house on the rock program can be happening and a pastor or a ministry that is not house on the rock says this is kingdom come how can i provide bosses how can i provide chairs you don't even need to announce my name i am a member of this church but i know that what god is doing is a real visitation and i will shelve my differences and see to it that christ is lifted if we do not listen to this the generation of the children coming will hate God, will fight God, and the devil will give them coordinated alternatives. Coordinated alternatives. Are we blessed? The vessels will always remain imperfect and earthen. Hmm. Many of you love Jesus because you have not seen him. In principle, men always love those they have not seen. I assure you, if Jesus walks in the flesh, after one week, many of you will run away from him. You read about the Jesus you so love. Are you aware of the people he flogged in the temple? Your Jesus. Are you aware of the names that he called people? Jesus you love God's generals oh I love them go and find out those who witnessed some of their time they were persecuted and hated you love Archbishop Benson Idahosa ask the people who worked with him I, I wish you were his secretary or his PA you may almost be tempted to say finally he has gone and yet this is the man we celebrate today most times we have this
tells him something it will really happen if you can respect it you can get that grace and add it to your enlightenment are we together this is what i learned in my life i have received from several people graces i'm not just talking of preachers alone no i discern i was ministering in kano i'm wrapping up now ministering in kano at a pfn crusade some years ago and then i'm prophesying and mighty things are happening people are just looking at me apostle joshua selman and here comes this woman that i called out by the spirit and she came out to her it was an honor to see me and yet god opened my eyes and I, I was seeing the substance of power this woman carried in the spirit she could not even speak english very well and she told me she said every 15 days she finishes the bible every 15 days in hausa hausa bible genesis to revelation ah i would be stupid to still remain a man of god at that point mama can you is it possible to pray for me a woman that can read the whole bible every 15 days i assure you no matter how diligent you are it has to be a grace a solid grace from heaven i remember i met a gentleman who fasted for 400 days i've not fasted for 400 days many people tell lies that they fasted for this and that it's only god that knows the truth but i met a man who genuinely fasted for 400 days six to six I wrapped up the last day with him and yet he was still following me for impartation i said this 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 body of christ is mysterious here is a man fasting for 400 days and yet he's still hoping i will lay hands on him who have you ignored who did god send to you as a prayer an answer to prayer and you ignored mama may not have been a businesswoman but all through your life you never saw her back quarter to shame there is a grace on her that will force blessings to come from anywhere do you not know you need that grace in the wicked world we live today everything you have you got it yourself nobody is willing to invest in your life something is wrong in this morning service we are going to pray and you are not just going to look at God and look at me you may be sitting down close to someone that you do not know the kind of grace that he or she carries let me wrap up before we pray with a very interesting story many of you may have heard who listen to my teachings this story i attended a conference many years ago and the man of god was sharing a very touching story mighty miracles happening in his church and yet he was dying in his home poverty lack failure yet people were coming to testify every week and he was the one praying for them and then one time while service was going on the wife got up and walked away imagine like the, wo the woman of god just gets up and walks out of this place people began to talk i hope everything is all right and he finished his counseling and rushed back home my wife what is wrong she didn't utter one word he sat down at table to eat did I offend you? I can apologize. She didn't tell him anything. The first thing he noticed was that the plate that she brought food for him was not the usual one. She took her time, got some of the best plates, and she was serving him. He said, what is this? Please go and we've been married for long. Let's not do this children's thing. Bring food for me and let me eat. She didn't utter a word again. So the man became concerned. And when she brought the last item and dropped it, she looked at him and went down on her knees and said servant of god my home is in trouble you see when the man climbed the stage he was a man of god but she did not tap into that dimension of the man of god she tapped into husband so all they had was children not solutions the person you may need whose grace you have been praying for may even be your younger brother in one year he got five jobs for ten years you are still looking for one there is a grace on him 
but I bring you the instruction. Can you unravel the riddle of Samson this morning? Don't cry. Some of you are crying. God is speaking to you. Man of God, you would have been greater than this. If only you saw that the gate man you had, that guy prays for five hours every day. Can you endure the smell so that you will receive the good in them? Many of us young people, when God grants us grace, especially on the plateau, for healings or prophecy, we go back to our local churches and we insult some of the pastors. No revelation. This man doesn't have any revelation. He's not even filled with the Holy Spirit. Yet, he has stayed for 30 years in ministry. And you are full of the Holy Ghost. You are just four years old and you are about to collapse. There is a grace for stability you can receive. That Baba preached before you were born. And he's still standing today. He may not know all the Greek and Hebrew. But there is a grace for sustenance. He will not suffer my food to be moved. I carry your presence everywhere. Who am I? Your mind is so full of me. Mortal man, awesome God. Mortal man, awesome God. Hallelujah. From the day I learned this, I made up my mind as a covenant that I will never talk against anybody. I made up my mind as a covenant that it's not only preachers I will honor. I will honor children. I have learned more from children. I have learned faith from children. You tell a child you will buy him a toy. There is no demon that will erode that memory from his mind. He will come to meet you with confidence and boldness. Remember, Uncle, you said you will buy me a bicycle. And he puts pressure on your ego till you go and borrow money and buy that bicycle. Apostle, they make too much noise in that church. I agree. Can you endure the noise and receive that prophetic word? Apostle, they don't spend time teaching. They teach all kinds of things. Can you endure and learn other things? Learn fellowship. Learn hallelujah are we together i don't like that traditional ruler he does not like smiling can you learn leadership i don't like my mother and my father they would have given birth to me in america or uk i would have had dual citizenship now look where they came and gave birth to me you keep talking like that while the gates of destiny keeps shutting over you we are going to pray the first prayer is repentance lord i repent for my sarcasm over the body of christ i have programmed woes over my life i have talked about men of god i have talked about business people i've talked about people in government listen without genuine repentance you will not see the power of god please pray now i have learned that more than an encounter with the Son of God, more than an encounter with the Holy Spirit, more than an encounter with the Word, I need an encounter with this mystery entity called the body of Christ. Are you praying? Lord, I obtain mercy. I have criticized excellent ministries. I have criticized prayer ministries. I have criticized prophetic ministries. I have criticized teaching ministries. I have criticized exceptional business people. I have criticized young people who made it early in life. I have criticized homes with well-cultured children. Pray, we are wrapping up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For a very long time, 
every time I would come to this city to just visit my family in a very strange way I discovered that the moment I got home it was as if I was not a man of God again that cloak of power and grace I would no longer feel it again and one day my biological mom she was here yesterday she got angry and she got sad and said no this one is just not this is not just my son you are a man of God and would we'll tap into that grace there are men today the solution to your problem is with your wife but you are just looking at her as a woman you've paid dowry over and she's blessing others and prophesying to others and yet your life is not rising same thing with women some of you your children some of you your pastors there are some of you here this man of God Reverend Akila you have seen what God is doing with him and some of you may just trivialize that and say oh he's just lucky that's the statement of arrogance Nicodemus came to Jesus by night and said Rabbi we know that thou art a man sent from God for no man can do these things except God be with him do you know that I came late yesterday into this city and even whilst the program was on I was shocked and amazed I'm sorry for having to say it but Reverend Akil I, I don't know if he left here he had to come to the hotel to come say hello just check up before he would run back I said pastor in my mind I said you didn't have to do this and then I remembered honor is the key for access who have you dishonored in the secret and in the open many of you listen to messages of men of god in the secret admiring what they carry and you come out and pretend you did not listen and criticize them that's why the teachings don't work because honor must be genuine it must be sincere there are politicians in this city who god has helped they have helped to build the plateau to what it is today we criticize them left right and center tear them down yet in our heart of hearts we desire a bit of those graces can you endure the smell so that you will receive the grace prayer point number two lord i receive forbearance and endurance forbearance and endurance i know that there are men of god who are silly resp respectfully speaking i know some of them may be arrogant i know some of them may be but do you have the grace to endure there are many business people who can be very sarcastic are you willing to endure lift your voice and pray Lord I receive the grace to endure I receive the grace to endure it tonight is a night of encounters tonight is a night of transformation by the word of God tonight is a night of supernatural visitations tonight is a night of miracles signs and wonders tonight is a night of unity and then tonight is a night of impartation this is the part that I want us to be very sensitive about because it starts right away an impartation is a transference of spiritual possibilities the possibilities of the kingdom are transferable virtues are transferable graces are transferable and you know the kind the dimension and the level of grace that is upon you by the results that you command so i like for our hearts to be open with all meekness and humility to receive that which the lord is doing the god of miracles i'm teaching tonight on the god of miracles psalm 72 and verse 18. our god is a supernatural god our god is a miracle working god it's a very important fact that I must stress our God is a supernatural God and our God is a miracle working God I'd like you to read with me if you can see it projected Psalm 72 and verse 18 ready please read blessed be the Lord God the God of Israel who only doeth wondrous things the Bible lets us know that the God of Israel is a miracle worker 
the God of Israel is a miracle worker let me again announce that the days of miracles are not over no God is still in the business of doing miracles the days of miracles did not end with the book of Acts it did not end with the early church it did not end with the dispensation of the generals it did not even end with our modern day patriarchs as far as the history of the church and of Christianity is concerned in this nation by the grace of God I'm a student of history I have studied revivals across continents I have studied the history of the church in Nigeria I've had the honor and the privilege to meet a few people in their lifetime before they transited I've had the honor to talk with a few revivalists I know what I am saying miracles are not ended God is still in the business of lifting people God is still in the business of healing the sick God is still in the business of raising the dead God is still in the business of turning lives around God is still in the business of wiping the tears of day that cry God is still in the business of supernaturally lifting people and shifting their levels from one dimension to the other God is a miracle worker and the days of miracles are only beginning truthfully speaking he's not changed for in malachi chapter 3 verse 6 malachi chapter 3 and verse 6 the a part it says for i am the lord and i change not i am the lord and i change not if i was a miracle worker before i am still a miracle worker hebrews chapter 13 and verse 8 apostle paul was teaching and he had this to say about jesus that jesus christ the same yesterday the same today and the same forever the same yesterday the healer yesterday the healer today the healer forever the lifter yesterday the lifter today and the lifter forever if you are with me say amen very quickly what are miracles we have to understand a bit about the supernatural this for me as far as i'm concerned is a crusade even though it was intended to be a conference and so um my teaching would be as basic as possible because we have to give room um for the ministry of the spirit praise the name of the lord miracles and the supernatural are the foundations of the christian faith you have to understand this everything about the faith life from genesis down to revelation is a communication of the supernatural and the communication of the miraculous from genesis the first verse to revelation the last verse it's it's everything supernatural and everything miraculous are we together now let me say something very important god is not a magician god does not do magic magic is a demonic and satanic manipulation of spiritual laws an attempt to aberrate and copy that which is divine god does not do magic god does not work magic but he is a miracle worker he's not a magician there are herbalists who practice magic there are people all across the world who are experts as far as the manipulation of spiritual laws are concerned and they seem to have provided a measure and a level of solutions and so over the years through their track record they have been trusted and sometimes we can bring these people side by side and just conclude that the most important thing is that there is a universal force that empowers them all god is not a magician but he's a miracle worker it's always been god's desire all through scripture to display the supernatural on earth and then in the midst of his people every once in a while we see through scripture that there will be a spectacular demonstration of the divine hand of god 
over the lives and the affairs of men within territories it will cause men to call upon the name of the lord again it will cause men to recognize his all supporting power above the then kings above the spiritual forces that attempt to sabotage god's purposes so god has always intended that his people never forget him as a miracle worker what are miracles let's do a quick definition miracles are supernatural occurrences miracles are supernatural occurrences that defy the laws of nature supernatural occurrences that defy the laws of nature or the usual course of events miracles defy the laws of nature and they also defy the usual course of events praise the name of the lord the bible from the old testament down to the life and the ministry of jesus and then to the ministry of the apostles was full of all kinds of miracles right from creation in genesis 1 let me run through a few you don't have to write just listen down to enoch's translation the bible talks of the miracle of the flood even though historically there are still all kinds of arguments as to whether the flood in the days of noah really happened but based on the authority of scripture we know that there was such an event it was not a parable there was such an event on earth where the entire earth was flooded with water the miracle of the donkey speaking in numbers 22 the burning bush for instance moses in the house of pharaoh advocating the exodus of the nation of israel and all the plagues that followed until pharaoh gave in these are manifestations of the hand and the power of god we read about the pillar of cloud and fire by day and by night we read about manna sent from heaven the bible records we read about water from the rock in rephidim you find that in exodus 17. we read about the mysterious and the strange defeat of the enemies of israel all through scripture these are examples of miracles the supernatural division of jordan river jordan the bible talks about men who were unusually empowered like samson who taught beasts with their bare hands defeated the philistines with the jawbone of an ass removed gates over cities we read about a man called elijah the tishbite who single-handedly shut the heavens and that for a period of three and a half years there was no rain in that land supernatural manifestations of the hand of god the bible talks to us about the widow's son who was raised from the dead fire coming from heaven to consume men the healing of the waters in jericho the bible talks to us about several other miracles the miraculous restoration of naaman the bible talks about the axe head that had to float against gravity i'm showing you instances from scripture a display of miracles signs and wonders the preservation of jonah in the belly of the fish how could a man be in the belly of the fish for three days defy all the laws of biology and then come out with a message from the belly of the fish god is a miracle worker then we read of the miracles in the ministry of jesus john chapter 2 starts by telling us the miracle of the wine in the wedding in cana jesus christ himself healing the demoniac in the synagogue healing peter's mother-in-law the drought of fish and the miracle that followed the important man who was healed in jerusalem john 5 
the servant of the centurion the widow of Nain Chariot's daughter these are all supernatural manifestations of the power of God the feeding of the 5,000 with two loaves and five fish one of the synoptics record the feeding of the 4,000 also the transfiguration of Jesus Christ money coming out from the mouth of a fish that means God can go to any length to see to it that they that call upon his name do not suffer shame may that be a word for someone tonight in the name of Jesus the Christ of God all kinds of miracles time will fail me to begin to do a comprehensive rundown of these manifestations the great of the greatest of them that we know is the miracle of resurrection where the son of the living God gave himself up and he was locked the Bible says and there were servants all around but at the third day the Bible says an angel came rolled the stone sat on it it's not a parable it actually happened and the son of the living God raised up by the spirit of holiness he rose from the grave without blood in his body all the blood had been drained and yet he was still alive what manner of man is Jesus we sing God is a God of miracles he appeared to the disciples admonished them over a period of 40 days and then levitated right before them into the heavens they waited 10 more days in fear then a supernatural event happened again God is a God of miracles the Bible says in Acts chapter 2 when you start from verse 1 it says now when the day of Pentecost was fully come that they were gathered together in one accord then it says suddenly a miracle happened there was a sound like it was in Ezekiel 37 and it came and filled the room and they saw what looked like cloven tongues as of fire these events actually happened on the earth rested upon each and every one of them they were filled with the Holy Spirit and that was the beginning of the manifestation of the church supernatural in one day 3,000 people came to Jesus Christ then you read through the book of Acts the spectacular display of the mighty hand of God how could you say the days of miracles are over the Bible talks about serpents that could not harm the apostles the Bible talked of people who died and brought themselves back to life God is a God of miracles I had the honor and the privilege to have witnessed firsthand the miracle and the ministry of our dearly beloved evangelist Reinhard Bonke I was right there on that crusade ground I remember like yesterday I attended that crusade the first day I saw spectacular miracles and by the second day I made up my mind that I wanted to sow that seed of honor to that man before he would transit in glory I wheeled people from the wheelchair myself they had stopped me because they said I was not part of the committee I said you're joking you don't know how far I travel to be part of this crusade committee or no committee I must sow that seed of honor and while I was wheeling people from the wheelchair I said Lord this is how it will also happen one day in my meeting I am honoring someone you have lifted right before my eyes I saw people stand from wheelchairs right before my eyes like we saw yesterday I saw people lifting crutches and walking and I said what in the world is this God is a miracle worker Hebrews chapter 11 is an archive of men and women who walk the earth like gods placing their faith on God Almighty and did valiantly on earth yes how the Bible puts it that time will fail me to talk of Gideon and Jephthah and Barak men who through faith subdued kingdoms wrought righteousness shut the mouth of lions women who received their dead back to life please shout with me God is a miracle worker 
one more time just god is a miracle worker acts chapter 2 1 verse 22 this was paul giving his sermon on the day of pentecost and here's what he said ye men of israel hear these words jesus of nazareth a man approved of god among you not by stories not by parables god approved jesus he validated that jesus was actually sent through the spectacular manifestation of miracles and wonders and signs which god did by him not in the absence of you in the midst of you just like it will happen shortly in this place that right in the midst of you the spirit of the living god will be having a holy convocation through this crowd setting the captives free healing the sick and bringing liberty to as many in the name of jesus christ god is a miracle worker in john chapter 2 chapter 20 and verse 21 jesus is preparing finalizing his days on earth so he would transit back in glory as the victorious savior and king and here's what he had to say jesus said to them again peace be unto you as my father had sent me joshua selman even so i send you as my father has sent me please every man of god hear me there is a way god sent jesus he sent him with an anointing not just a message he sent jesus with a great provable unction he didn't just send him with a well-meaning comforting message he said as my father had sent me in that similitude i send you as my father had sent me so send i you john chapter 14 john chapter 14 and verse 12 in fact please back up a bit let's go to matthew matthew chapter 10 we'll read verse 1 then we'll read verse 7 matthew chapter 10 this is jesus test running the disciples who would later become the apostles of the lamb this was the instruction he gave them verse 1 then we go to 7 and when he had called on to him the 12 disciples listen carefully he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease verse 7 please and he said as ye go preach saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand prove the reality of this message by verse 8 healing the sick cleansing the lepers raising the dead casting out devils these are the proofs that the kingdom has come that if these realities are not true then we have a right to doubt the reality of the kingdom in our midst if it is true that jesus is alive if it is true that he conquered death hell and the grave there must be tokens of that victory and the signs and the wonders that have been experienced in the church and that will be experienced tonight are tokens of that victory it is true that jesus is alive and it is true that god still works miracles the requests that are scattered here in the bowls and on the social media platforms are representations of the pain the ills the concerns of so many across the plateau how would god be such a benevolent father and look down from heaven and watch these sheets representing the the pain of families and then allow us gather like this only to share the grace and return back in misery if you were god you would not respond to such hunger that way i assure you tonight that these egyptians you see you will see them no more forever one more time i prophesy that these egyptians you see over your ministry over your life in the name of jesus you will see them no more forever please sit down
in John 14 and verse 12 Jesus said verily verily I say unto you he that believeth on me the works that I do this is scripture the works that I do shall he also do and greater works than these shall he do because I go unto my father Mark 16 from verse 17 Mark 16 from verse 17 and these signs shall follow them that believe if you are a believer please shout I am a believer he said this sign shall follow them that believe in my name they shall cast out devils in my name leave that scripture there they shall cast out devils in my name they shall cast out devils whilst I am speaking right now the power of God is touching people I want you to bring them out there are all kinds of demonic cases right now being addressed by the Spirit of God because he said in my name I declare that any spirit that is not on the, of the Christ located within this vicinity in the name of Jesus the Christ of God I come against you now in the name of Jesus help them I come against you now in the name of Jesus I come against you now in the name of Jesus I come against you now don't bring people out at random those under the anointing the power of God is touching people the power of God is touching people just bring those under the anointing in my name they shall cast out devils in my name they shall cast out devils I'm not sure that what's that he's sick what's wrong with him okay I'm going to pray for the sick I'm talking about those who are under the anointing right now as I'm speaking I'm seeing what looks like fire I'm explaining this scripture for you I'm seeing what looks like fire and is resting on people from the front to the back I'm seeing chains even breaking right now as I speak and I declare in the name of Jesus my God please help them in the name of Jesus the son of the living God those chains be broken right now please ushers help them I'm only talking about those under the anointing my dear look at me even though I've not started praying for the sick but since you are out let me pray for you ushers can you help coordinate the people so that we make sure that only the people that just bring those under the anointing that's the instruction please someone just help coordinate them the Lord is setting people free right now my dear do you believe in Jesus shout Jesus as loud as you can you that's not how to shout out of her now in the name of Jesus Christ and the little one is her daughter baby in the name of Jesus Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit every demon and every devil that oppresses you gives way now in the name of Jesus Christ in my name please keep that scripture this is not a parable in my name they shall cast out devils we're going to shout that name once whilst we're seated and as I see four horns these are the horns that have lifted up themselves against Judah and Jerusalem so that no man doth lift up his head he said but I have sent four carpenters again I decree and declare that every influence around this vicinity that is not the Christ it comes under judgment right now in the name of Jesus it comes under judgment right now in the name of Jesus it comes under judgment right now in the name of Jesus please give us that scripture in my name they shall cast out devils in my name they shall speak with new tongues verse 18 in my name they shall take up serpents and if they drink any deadly thing it shall not hurt them in my name they shall lay hands on the sick they shall lay hands on the sick they shall lay hands on the blind 
they shall lay hands on cripples they shall lay hands on the deaf they shall lay hands on those with terminal diseases and the bible says they shall recover someone shout god is a miracle worker one more time shout god is a miracle worker now listen please we're about to pray shortly i want to explain something very briefly the dynamics of the supernatural in as much as god is a miracle worker you must understand the spiritual operation of the miraculous but please allow me pray for those in front so that they go and sit in the name of jesus everyone here in front under any influence that is not of the christ i come with the rod of a higher priesthood and i command those forces go now 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 out of their lives out of their destinies out of their families in the name of jesus everything stolen be recovered now in the name of jesus christ for the bible declares where the spirit of the lord is there is liberty we enforce liberty blotting out every handwriting the bible says and every ordinance that spoke against us he nailed it to his cross every legal access upon which the devil lays claim on your life and family i declare you are free right now in the name of jesus you are free right now in the name of jesus you are free right now in the name of jesus father these ones who have come out in the name that is above all names for them and for their families they will never return to this again we build a spiritual fortification around your life you will never forget this crusade in the name of jesus everything that was lost shall be returned unto you everything that was stolen shall be restored unto you everything that was lost shall be returned unto you hallelujah praise the lord in the name of jesus christ now for those who are fine they can return back to their seat let me touch on this very quickly hallelujah there is now i don't know how we're going to do this now my god there is someone at the back you came with a crutch lift that crutch up and walk now please lift your crutch and walk now in the name of jesus look at it lift your crutch walk 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 lift your crutch and walk look at this a miracle has happened there my god just is this how you celebrate the miracle walking god The Lord is showing me another person. You came, I don't know, there is, if it's a crutch or something that is assisting you, like an aid. Right now, the power of God is touching you. I'm going to pray for the sick, but this is just an instruction God is giving me. Whoever that person is, don't be afraid. Lift it up and walk. Lift it up and walk. Lift it up and walk. Don't be afraid. Lift it up and walk. I don't know if there's someone like that. Lift it up and walk. We'll be seated shortly. The devil is a liar. Lift it up and walk. My dear, look at me. How long have you been with this? This is seven months. 
there's a miracle happening somewhere celebrate Jesus Please guide them, those who, if there's someone like that and God is doing a miracle, let's. Someone, a wheelchair. There's a miracle there. Hallelujah. Give Jesus praise. Give Jesus praise, Joss. Is this how you celebrate miracles? We are here for you come and do what you do we are here for you come and do what celebrate jesus Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, let me have a mic, please. I want to talk to this lady. Another miracle is happening somewhere. Please hold on. Be careful with them so that they don't enjoy it. Look at the lady. My dear, look at me. Hold on. Who brought this lady? How long has it been? For the past eight years. For the past eight years. Hold on, please. Is this mic working? Please help us. She was diagnosed of kidney failure September last year. Kidney failure? Yes, September, September last year. My sister, look at me. In the name of Jesus, walk. Come. 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 Careful with her so she doesn't fall. I command that devil out of her now. In the name of Jesus, are you celebrating miracles? Please just help her. Let her get somewhere and sit down. Let me talk with this lady. What's your name, my dear? Gloria. Please, someone manage them just as we celebrate miracles. Just give them somewhere to sit so they are not stressed. Yes, please. My name is Gloria. Someone, a crutch, someone has been healed right now. We are here for Please lift your voice and begin to pray. Everything that must change, let it change in my life right now. God is already touching people. Are you praying? Someone is praying. Hallelujah. Please. Hallelujah. Look at me. Mama, be careful. Don't stretch yourself. How long has this been? Who is with the mic? Okay. How many years? Eight years. Eight years. Eight years. You live in just here? Yes, sir. What's your name, Ma? My name is Stella. Stella. Nice. From Stella from where, Ma? What area? Tudunwada. Tudunwada. Yes, sir. You believe in miracles. Mm -hmm. Place your hand there. Father, in the name of Jesus, perfect this woman right now. The power of the Holy Ghost is touching you. Now. Now. In the name of Jesus, help her. The power of God is coming upon her. Just keep her down there. In the name of Jesus, let it be over forever. Let me talk with this girl. What's your name, my dear? My name is Gloria. From where? From Bukuru. How long has this been? Since August last year. August last year? Yes, sir. You had to use the crutch? Yes, sir. How were you walking before? Let me see. Use the crutch. Let me just see how you were walking with the crutch. This is how you used to walk. When you came here, was this how you were walking? Now lift it and walk. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, the Lord perfects you right now. In the name of Jesus. We'll be praying for the sick shortly. This was just an instruction that God gave me. Please let them find somewhere to sit. But before we sit, there is someone you came here is this my left or right this is left your left ear you could not hear with it you couldn't hear with it check yourself now 
in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus check it right now you check it you find out that a miracle just happened a miracle just happened a miracle just happened I rebuke deafness of all sorts in the mighty and the matchless name of Jesus deafness of all sorts in the mighty and the matchless name of Jesus let there be a supernatural miracle for you in Jesus name can we finish up what we are teaching before we pray please sit please sit please sit God is doing mighty things in this place praise the Lord now let me explain something very quickly and then we will pray for a very long time believers have found the subject of the miraculous mysterious I want to explain something please and respectfully speaking if you're a minister of the gospel here you may want to listen because I found it strange for many years why even though we read from scripture that miracles should be a common occurrence of believers more so servants of God but the reason why we do not see these experiences um, and then I got to a point where what's that what's happening what is that please please ushers make sure you verify whatever it is what, what's that what happened oh the ears have opened my god my friend look at me stand up stand up stand up what's your name ah huh? israel israel yes what's your name sir how long have you had this since you were born is this how you celebrate miracle in joss amazing oh this lady her ears open too look at this look at this stand up my friend where is the gentleman stand up from the day you were born close the ear come oh dear just put the mic close to him just turn don't look at me just say what you think i'm saying hallelujah give jesus praise my friend look at me you believe in miracles now yes, sir. because um you love jesus yes, sir. Do. i'll pray for you it's not enough to receive miracles you must be empowered to go and represent the same my friend look at me how long what's your name my name is israel israel how long have you had this I think since 2006. 2006 how many years is that More than 15. 15 years which of the ear the left. the left put your hand there my dear what's your name favor favor how long has this been last year, last year. what happened last year. just like that yeah. this is how you know that this is the devil why will you have god give you ears and for no reason it just stops was this verified medically you went to the hospital. Yes. Which hospital? Jordan Air Force. Air Force. Where is it? Oh, okay. There's a hospital like that. I'm so sorry. The reason why we do this is because, I guess because of some of these things that happen around any spectacular manifestation, people think it's stage managed. So sometimes it's forced us to have to go out of our way. Not everybody is fake. -o. There are people who have paid their price in God. Genuinely and they carry genuine grace i think I, I need to say this praise the name of the lord father in the name of jesus perfection this miracle you have done in their lives it remains so my god will so celebrate miracles this night in the name of jesus christ i decree and declare by the spirit of grace it will never return to you again in jesus name celebrate them as they return back to their seats praise the Lord now please listen I'm about to share something very important we've had an age 
old controversy especially in the body of christ and there's been as far as manifesting the supernatural is concerned and i just want to place a balance to this we've had people who believe in the ministry of the holy spirit and they may not place that much value on the word of god for instance we can just be singing here and then miracles begin to happen and so there are people who have obtained results that way and they downplay the necessity of the word and of scripture they believe that the singular factor responsible for the miraculous is the holy spirit and then there are others who believe that it is just the word of god if the word of god is not here that you cannot receive so there's been a controversy between those who are in quote the spirit people and those who are the word people this has been so for ages both of them are right but both of them are incomplete the ministry of the word and the spirit is not a choice for you to choose one they go together and i want to explain to you the roles that they play as far as the manifestation of spiritual reality is concerned the bible never said in the beginning was the spirit it says in the beginning was the word so we understand that in order of precedence it is the word of god listen to me the word of god defines the jurisdiction and the boundary of his commitment in the life of a believer god cannot be committed to a believer outside of the jurisdiction of scripture you have to understand this the word of god defines the coordinates of god's commitment every time your demand or your action is out of the provisions allowed from scripture god loves you but you cannot secure his attention nor his commitment you have to understand this the assignment of the spirit through the anointing is to give credence and performance to the word please understand this the holy spirit shows up through his anointing to honor the word that is spoken that means if the word for healing goes forth listen carefully that jesus said in my name the sick will be healed because that word has been proclaimed and the word has been honored the assignment of the holy spirit is to ensure that the healing anointing is sufficiently experienced to make sure the anointing has the assignment of validating the word the assignment of the anointing is to ensure that god does not look like a liar so the anointing has no assignment when the word has not been proclaimed because the assignment of the anointing the anointing gives credence to the word are we together now yes so if i say blind eyes be open that is a word that came from the lord it is the anointing that goes forth from the spirit and brings performance to that word so when we celebrate open eyes then it is proven now experientially that god is not a man that he should lie nor the son of man that he should repent so the idea of emphasizing the spirit as against the word or the word as against the spirit is unnecessary it's like foil and a car the assignment of the foil is to make sure that the car moves to its designated place but fuel in a jerry can in itself is not useful the value of that fuel is when it functions in a car are you getting what i'm saying now the word of god is like that car and the anointing is like the fuel if you have the car alone even if it is a a latest whatever it is of a car if it does not have the fuel it will be there but not be able to do much so if all you have is word 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 with no spirit you will keep speaking a lot of theological dissertations with no grace for performance and if all you have is spirit 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 you will not know when you have delved into occultism because the word of god that creates the boundary is not there the realm of the spirit is a vast realm and the holy spirit is not the only spirit there so the word of god gives you balance i don't know if god has helped somebody this night 
lives so when we celebrate the manifested presence of god when we celebrate his anointing it is because the factor that confirms the word is there now we can speak boldly knowing that the grace that makes for performance is there all of the people who god healed here they came sick and even though i was preaching and what i was saying was the word of god they still were not healed until the word for their healing so the holy ghost will keep hovering his assignment is to confirm the word spoken not the word available the word spoken the word declared not the word available the word spoken and god said light be and there was and god said light be and there was are we blessed now yes now believers listen please we have a participatory role to play as far as the manifestation of the supernatural and the miraculous is concerned i must quickly say this there's been a narrative for a very long time that believers do not have any role to play if god wants to heal me he will heal me we say that's a very well-intentioned statement but it is not accurate are we together now yes oftentimes we'll see in scripture jesus telling sick people what do you desire that i do for you even when he met obvious situations you would think when he met blind Bartimaeus on his way going out of jericho and he called upon him thou son of david have mercy upon me you would think it would be obvious that he needed healing from his blind eyes if you understand the way god walks you will know the kind of respect he has for the will of man god will not assume that you need healing he respects your will that much even at the detriment of your eternal destiny he still allows you to make a choice there are people going to hell today even though the victory of christ over sin over death over satan is a reality are we together the bible says let the redeemed of the lord say so you must verbalize your commitment in fact here's how it puts it it says be anxious for nothing but it says in everything by prayer and supplication even through with thanksgiving make your request known don't assume god knows it make your request known and so this request that we have is an honor to that scripture make your request known let the lord know you need healing let him know that you need to step into new levels let him know you are tired of your current level don't say god you are watching me and doing nothing you have to make your request known hear me the name given to your participatory role as far as the manifestation of the miraculous is concerned is called faith faith i did explain i think in one of the sessions was it the first or the morning service yesterday how that faith is more than believing for a very long time we call believing faith believing is part of the equation believing has to do with conviction you're agreeing with god but that is not enough to the faith equation faith is the name given to the action you take based on your conviction on who god is and the integrity of his word the name given to the action not just the declaration not just the believing believing comes from the word pistis and it's not enough it has to be action i demonstrated it here yesterday many people continue to believe as we call it and we believe in definitely without a manifestation there has to be an action of obedience Deuteronomy chapter 28 from verse 1 and 2 it shall come to pass the Bible declares if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord to do and observe all that I command you this day then you shall be exalted above all the nations of the earth and this blessing shall come upon you and overtake you Joshua 1 verse 8 it says this book of the law shall not depart from out of thy mouth but thou shalt meditate during day and night that thou mayest observe to do not just to say not just to wish to do according to all that is written therein then and only then shall thou make your way prosperous and then you shall have good success are we together so faith very important theologically speaking there are three places in scripture where you would hear the statement your faith has made you whole the first is in matthew chapter 9 from verse 20 
to 22 this was the narrative of the woman with the issue of blood the bible lets us know that this woman said to herself watch her act of faith now she had spent money the bible says on physicians doctors and she could not become better hearing and seeing jesus pass she said to herself if i may but touch the hem of his garment i shall be made whole if she just stopped at saying she would remain in that issue forever she had to take that step it was a risk and when she touched jesus the bible says that she touched the hem of his garment verse 21 please it says for she said within herself if i may but touch the hem of his garment i shall be made whole 22 it says jesus turned him about and when he saw her he said daughter be of good comfort your faith what faith the summation of everything you did as touching your confidence in me your contemplation your speaking backed up by your action called faith this is what made you whole not your speaking alone not your wishing to be healed alone from your wishing your desire because the bible says what things soever ye desire so it starts with desire when ye pray it says believe that thou receivest it and thou shall have it your desire the confession the action of faith that you take all together the bible calls it faith it says that's what played to bring your healing are we together second story that proves that faith is important as far as the manifestation of the god of miracles is in luke chapter 17 it's a long reading but we may not read it for time's sake from verse 11 to 9 the story of the 10 lepers the bible says that jesus was passing and there were 10 lepers desiring to be healed he told them get up prove that you believe me by taking that risk go and show yourself to the priest the bible says whilst they went not whilst they spoke not whilst they thought they had to stand up and take actions of obedience and whilst they went they discovered that they were cleansed and the bible says one returned and gave thanks etc but the, the message is that they had to get up and move they had to get up and take action last scripture math mark chapter 10 from verse 46 to 52 long reading again just write it for reference the bible talks about a blind man who was healed he saw blind Bartimeo, the son of Timio. he sat by the highway begging you're tempting me to read and finish that scripture well let's read we've started and when he heard that it was jesus of nazareth so he started with his hearing faith cometh by hearing the bible says he began to cry out and say so we see that it moved from hearing to his saying verbalizing his intent thou son of david have mercy on me 48 we're reading to 52 and many charged him that he should hold his peace that means distractions are not unusual when you are manifesting faith there were people who tried to shut him down but he cried the more thou son of david have mercy on me next verse please and jesus stood still and commanded him to be called and when they called the blind man when they called the blind man the bible recognizes his blindness jesus said unto him be of good cheer rise he called you okay they, he was asked and then he casted away his garment and what rose he would have sat there and said i don't need to stand all i need is healing in my eyes he would have remained there he had to take that step even though blind at the instance of the word he took that step and the bible calls it faith 51 jesus answered and said unto him seems like a silly question but this is the extent to which god has regard for the will of man what will thou that i should do unto thee and the man politely answered the blind man that i may receive my sight tonight don't just say god help me it looks like a good prayer but the bible says give us this day our daily bread you have to mention what you desire don't just say lord just help me my life i don't even understand what is happening whatever you can do is a very well-meaning well-intentioned communication but there is no faith there give us this day and you mention what you want our daily bread are we together and jesus said to him go thy way thy faith aha uh -huh. here you find it again 
thy faith had made thee whole and immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus in the way let me wrap up this brief teaching session by sharing what I think is most important seldom forgotten when we are dealing with the subject of miracle signs and wonders what is the purpose of miracles why does God reveal himself as a miracle working God God is a God of purpose he does nothing just for the fun of it we have to learn to discern miracles if we do not discern the purpose and the intent of miracles then it is usually very difficult for Christ to be glorified in the midst of miracles number one there are two biblical reasons why miracles happen number one to reveal the love of the father the first assignment of the miraculous is to demonstrate practically that God's communication about his love for his people is not a lie is not a scam John 3 16 the character of love is that it always gives for God so loved the world that he gave not just desired he gave if it is true that God is a loving God it must be demonstrated in the extent of his benevolence our confidence as we receive is that the fatherhood of God is still in place in our lives you must be ever conscious of the fatherhood of God he said which of you being evil which of you will your son ask for bread and you give him a stone ask for meat fish and you give him a serpent he said if you being evil even though you are evil you have that sense of empathy how much more will your heavenly father give good gifts other versions say the holy ghost god is a giver please say after me god is a giver the reason why we are receivers is because he is a giver the revelation of the love of god first john chapter 4 from verse 8 apostle john was teaching and admonishing us first john 4 and verse 8 the bible says that he that does not love does not know god for god is love god does not have love god is love so when he demonstrates miracles signs and wonders there is a message behind the blind eye opening there is a message behind the cripple walking listen carefully there is a message behind the demonic being delivered there is a message behind one who is poor sitting on the ground being lifted overnight to the place of princes every supernatural manifestation of god has a message the miracle is for you but the message is what helps you to see the intent of god in it most times we celebrate the miracles we even celebrate the man who god used the vessel but we do not discern the message behind miracles so from tonight when you experience miracles don't just celebrate and dance and say god is good he's done me well discern the message behind every miracle that has happened that will happen this night and the days that follow there is a message do not enjoy the miracle alone make sure you are discerning enough to see the message that is back of it someone shout amen hallelujah number two why does god reveal himself as the god of miracles what is the purpose of the supernatural and the miraculous to show and reveal his might and his power to show and to reveal his might and his power drawing men to salvation and causing men to honor him you have to understand this god works miracles he reveals himself as a god of miracles to show to reveal his might and his power drawing men to salvation and causing men to honor him there's a long reading when you read daniel chapter 3 for reference from verse 1 to 30 is a long reading you read about the events that happened in babylon 
when a 90 feet stature of gold a man who decided that he had been so exalted he will be god and he built a stature that at the sound of musical instruments the timbrel etc that everyone would bow and the bible says there were three hebrew boys shadrach meshach and abednego who although they had the fortitude to honor the king they made up their mind that on that matter on the matter of idolatry they would not bow the consequence is that the fire was made seven times hotter and they were thrown into the fire but a miracle happened there that as soon as they got into that fire the chains and everything melted away like wax before the fire and they saw one in their midst who was like the son of god in the end of it let's look at daniel chapter 3 i hope i'm right verse um at least let's look at 27 maybe the last three verses daniel chapter 3 the bible says and the princes look up governors and captains the king's counselors being gathered together saw this man upon whose bodies the fire had no power ah powerful statement the fire so there are some bodies on earth that fire has no power over there are bodies there are families a body does not just mean a human body a ministry can be a body a business can be a body there are bodies that orchestrations of darkness has no authority reminds me what jesus said nothing shall by any means hurt you nor was the hair of their hair singed neither was their coat changed nor the smell of fire had passed on them a decree was passed as a result nebuchadnezzar spake and said as a result the purpose of miracles blessed be the god of shadrach meshach and abednego i do not know his name but i will name him after those who know him when god works a miracle in your life that testimony can give god a name through your life why do you think he's called the god of abraham then the god of isaac your assignment is to spend your lifetime giving god a new name by the spectacular manifestation of the wonders that he walks through your life that you should not depart from earth and all they know is that he's the god of abraham isaac and jacob something about your experience with god should give him a name let's keep that scripture we're wrapping up the bible says who had sent his angel and delivered his servants that trusted in him and has changed the king's word and yielded their bodies that they might not serve or worship any god except their own god very interesting two more verses 29 therefore someone because of what god is doing in your life what had been the prior decrees about to be changed tonight in the name of jesus therefore i make a decree that every people every nation every language which speak anything amiss against the god of this gentleman shall be caught in pieces and their houses be made a dunghill because hallelujah there is no other god that can deliver after this sort there is a way god does miracles he does it the way Julius Berger builds roads or most of the construction companies. How many of you have seen a standard construction company building a road or doing some kind of architectural work? They do it in a way that you know is them. They leave a little signature. If Julius Berger builds you a place, you will see a little symbol B so that you do not confuse. Don't give the credit to the wrong people. So there is a way other gods heal. There is a way other gods change lives. But there is a way my God and your God does it. He does it in a way that everybody knows that this one, it was El Shaddai that lifted you. It was El Shaddai that gave you a new song. My Bible says, when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. As a result of this, the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the province of Babylon. We discern miracles when we see the love of Jesus revealed through them. We discern miracles when we see the might of God revealed through them. I will 
sing unto the Lord for he has triumphed gloriously the horses and its riders have been thrown into the sea that was a song of Miriam when they saw the matchless hand of God listen to me I am a recipient of miracles myself right in this city i was diagnosed of situations that only god would do a miracle for me i remember it today like it happened yesterday a mysterious infection that i could not explain wanted to eat up my head completely every kind of medical consultation failed right in this city medical experts I remember the pain of taking samples of the injuries I remember being in the lab and having several lab attendants do their best I remember they came up with a lotion they came up with soap to help me and it would it was just, it was like this thing would not it was a miracle that hair would still grow on my head God is a God of miracles listen it's one thing to preach what you read in the Bible. It's another thing to preach what has happened in your life. Sometimes God allows us to go through certain things so we can have sufficient compassion to administer that dimension of grace. Some of us are too innocent. We are too separated from what we are helping people from. That's why the compassion to insist until they are healed, until they are delivered, I remember that night I went to bed and I woke up in the morning and there was a miracle supernatural miracles I'm not exaggerating more than 70% of the wounds had disappeared what is this I had read watched videos but this is happening to me not some person in the US I have been a benefactor of the miraculous. I remember a time in my life, I couldn't look at this light you see. If I looked at it for over five minutes, my eyes would burn. Burn literally. I remember talking with a consultant who had done everything, written the focal length of the you know glasses that will be made and all of that and I said Lord I don't have a problem with this but I'm a young man and I have I didn't even know that I had the call of God upon my life but I just knew there was something burning in me please listen carefully I remember watching Benny Hinn he was ministering and I got down on my knees with childlike faith I said Lord I don't know this man but I believe him and suddenly he said there's a young man you are watching from Africa and there's a problem with your eyes light not vision physically from the television came and entered my eyes till today i have 20 20 vision i know what it means to be a benefactor and a recipient of miracles we're about to pray but i cannot end without telling you my story i began my pursuit for god loving him but I had a dissatisfaction in my heart. I listened to sermons. I went to churches. I saw well-meaning people loving the Lord. But I saw the sick remaining sick. I saw oppressed people remaining oppressed. We sang hymns. We sang songs that communicated the power of God. And I read those hymns. Powerful hymns that talked about the mighty hand of God. 
games like up from the grave he arose with the mighty triumph on his hands he arose the victor I, I, I read those hymns and I said no 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 something is wrong I had powerful messages and in the midst of those messages I saw people who I knew were oppressed I said there has to be something more than this we're tired of the status quo there's gotta be more than this it's gotta be it's gotta be more it's gotta be more it's gotta be more than this for desperate people do desperate things and we're pressing in it's gotta be more it's gotta be more it's gotta be more than this listen when the lord called me to ministry i said lord please i cannot stand before your people and keep advocating truths that i cannot defend i do not want to tell people things that i will go back to the room and say did i lie i didn't want to advocate dimensions that could not be defended my hunger first for god and for his genuine fire reached the heavens days became weeks weeks became months months became years there is a way you desire god that you know if you do not find him you will die i'm not talking of looking for god for a sermon i'm not talking for about looking for him for money and cars and houses there is a law that governs encounters when you seek him with all your heart you will truly find him please listen to my story one night i was lying down quietly minding my business and a spectacular miracle happened all of a sudden from a direction i could not explain here he walked into my room his majesty my desire of years the one who preacher spoke about Jesus was standing right before me the one who died that Nazarene I could look at any part of his body forever and not be tired brilliance I'm telling you I still do not know how his face looks like I was like a speck of dust on the floor i didn't know how do i start worshiping this man do i bow down do i kneel down do i sing him a song what do i offer such an august visitor please listen to me because some of you are in a phase where you are about to have such encounters he never spoke a word to me all he did was to stretch his right hand towards me and light imagine carrying the sun help those under the anointing please light from him is like taking the sun and putting it inside an ant how i did not die is something i will ask him when we get to heaven i have seen the one we talk about let me tell you this the first time i saw jesus I knew that many people do not know him no 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 you know today people say they saw Jesus it's not for me to argue with anyone but if it's the Jesus I saw that you saw you will never be the same no matter whether you believe it or not read your Bible and see what happened to people when they met him it took me more than one year to recover from that encounter he stretched his hands and light came now watch this he didn't have to open his mouth yet he was talking to me that was the first time i discovered that the language of god is not hebrew the language of god is not greek the language of god is not hausa it's not english the language of god is light the entrance of thy word giveth light and understanding to the simple listen to me after that encounter 
I opened my Bible and I could not believe again. It was like a straight line was drawn from Genesis to Revelation. I started knowing things I did not remember studying them. Where is this revelation coming from? In another encounter, listen to me. I was standing and I saw a crowd of people like this. It was a whole generation of people. And they were crying and saying there is no food and there is no water. I said, who is the cause? And they pointed to me. I said, no, 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 I can't do this. Why will I deprive you of food and water? But I was afraid because in that vision, it's like there were people who were following me to persecute me. And I was afraid. But I made up my mind. I said, if I perish, I perish. As soon as I opened the door, I saw a giant gray-headed man that I now know to be a similitude of the Holy Spirit. He said, give me your hands. I will walk with you. And he held me and that began the ministry of the spirit that you now see today sometimes it's important that we explain this is please don't misunderstand me this is not a show of pride at all i was praying one night and i was caught up to the realm of the spirit please help them and then the Lord spoke to me and said, Son, from this day, I give you my manifest presence as a gift. I didn't even understand what you were saying. What is the meaning of this? All of a sudden, I see this angel stand before me. And he said, this angel will walk with you across every nation and every place. And he said, his name is the angel of the Lord's presence. I said, is that not supposed to be God himself? And this is why many times you see some of the manifestations that you see. But here's why I said all these stories. The Lord gave me an assignment. And he said, every city, every nation, and every continent that I will send you to. Now be sensitive, please. That in that congregation, there will always be a group of people that the light that came from me to you you must transfer part of that light to them i have not failed in this assignment once this is why you heard me pleading with you and say please help them you see what is happening my god Please bring them out. Help them. So tonight, people of God, I am not just coming to do a man of God's thing. No. I am sent. There is a mandate and there is an assignment. And it's an honor to bring this light that came from heaven to the plateau. The light that will ignite men. The light that will call men into supernatural dimensions of ministry aside from the healings and the miracles hear me that light that came from his majesty hear me there are people in this place this night there will be wells of the prophetic that will be opened afresh again some of you have seen this day in your dreams some of you have seen it in visions for some of you it's not new you know what i'm saying God already showed you that one day you will be standing face to face with destiny. Please, wherever you are, lift your voice in one minute. Cry from the depth of your heart. Let this be my night of visitation. Lift your voice and pray. Just you will never be the same. The church on the plateau, you will never be the same. I bring you grace from the throne. I bring you fire from his majesty.
Are you praying? Forget about what is happening. Focus on Jesus. Pastors, pray. Pray for your ministry. Prayer warriors, pray. Women in ministry, pray. Business people, pray. Politicians, pray. There is a visitation upon the plateau. Hallelujah. Now, please listen to me. Please listen to me. We're about to pray. As I came in, I came in a bit late. And as I sat here, I saw standing just at that screen, there was a large angel standing there, right here, standing there. And I saw them holding vials of oil. And I knew immediately, I knew the significance of what I was seeing. And I'm praying because the spirit of god and the angelic there are impartations the front is filled you don't have to bring people out again please just help them wherever you are in one minute wherever you are i like you to pray every grace that you know that is available that you need for your life for business for ministry please lift your voice and pray call it by faith call it by faith Call it by faith. Your ministry is about to step into a new level. I assure you, it won't be ministry as usual. The God of miracles, your business, your spiritual life. There are many of you, God is calling you a new order of prayer and intercession, a new order of fasting, new dimensions of revelation, new levels of the prophetic. Don't be tired of praying. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Please let me have your attention. May I request respectfully speaking. Reverend Akila. If we can have. Seven. Of the pastors and the leaders. Just seven as you would select. I want them to come and stand with me prophetically here. We are going to pray over the church on the plateau in unity. And we are going to say, Lord, let this be a new season. We are standing prophetically. Okay, please. Seven. At least let there be one woman, if it's possible, please, who represents the gates. We are going to pray. Something must happen in this land. Ali Salako Branda Gatosiata All of you don't keep watching, just keep praying. We are praying for Plato. Forget about the sick. Forget about all of this. We are praying is a new season. We are going to stand in unity regardless of doctrinal differences regardless of the challenges we have here and there there are too small a reason hear me plateau there is much that god wants to do divided we truly fall it is in unity that we stand the days of celebrity christianity is over we must stand as one people in the name of jesus and lift up that banner of the name of Jesus hallelujah praise the Lord now watch this hold on please
this is what we are going to do everyone inside the overflow those following from whatever nation we are going to pray for a global audience but for now the attention is on the plateau God's own state a state he has so exalted yet to come into its prophetic destiny but we are standing as servants of God to say no longer will it remain a prophetic word far there we have come to give it life that it starts from now some of you have seen it you prophesied it in your churches and your groups that a day will come when God will move this way we cannot prolong anymore it's time to fulfill prophecy some of our fathers prophesied it on the plateau and went to be with the Lord without seeing it let it happen in our lifetime Maranatha come hallelujah now this is what will happen I will just allow one or two of our fathers to just pray and make decrees on behalf of all of us and then we will stand in unity and speak over the church in plateau tearing down the walls of divide tearing down the walls of spiritual unseriousness and we are going to pray that the fire from heaven will fall upon the church in plateau that on the streets in businesses in government in parliament from the government house to every ministry every parastatal let there be an invasion of the life and the power of jesus we have to pray for the destiny of our children we cannot lose the children in plateau to drugs we cannot lose the children in plateau to violence and all kinds of occultism it's time to take back what god has given to us are you in agreement open your mouth and begin to pray jesus Oh, city of Jaws. Oh, Plateau. The sons of the strangers devour you no more, desecrate you no more. Oh, city of Jaws. Oh, Plateau. Take your place once again. Take your place once again let revival break forth from the city of Jesus to the nations of the world do it jehovah do it jehovah do it jehovah watch over your word and perform your word amen Plateau, the land of hills and valleys and standing waters. Your enemies will never sit on you anymore. Your enemies will never take your lands anymore. Your enemies will never laugh at you anymore. The destinies that have been trapped on the land of Plateau shall be set free. God Almighty is going to set us free. Plateau shall be free. The name of Plateau shall be heard all over the world. The children of Plateau will be performers of miracles and wonders because the God of Israel is with us. God bless you all. Praise the Lord. Now, we're, we're conserving time, but it's an honor to stand with a few of the representatives, the ministers, fathers, veterans in the gospel now please listen very carefully i want to make this decree in the name of the lord i stand here only by the election of grace but i want us to believe as we make these declarations hallelujah father we declare standing in faith as the church upon the plateau let the days of fighting and division come to an end now let the days of ill speakings tearing down one another based on tribal sentiments let it come to an end now in the name of jesus we stand in faith and corporately as a church we repent of anything 
that is giving satan legal access over the plateau we plead the blood of jesus on the plateau we plead the blood of jesus over every altar that is speaking against the destiny of plateau state let mercy triumph over judgment for the bible declares if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face turning from their wicked ways he says i will hear from heaven i will forgive their sins and heal their lands we declare blood to be healed in the name of jesus we decree and declare O earth hear ye the word of the lord yield your increase to the inhabitants of this state all of the over 17 local governments i hope i'm right we declare let revival fire from this point spread all through in the name of jesus every local government may god raise men and women of fire we pray for all the churches we pray for all the prayer groups all the mission agencies all the platforms that lift up the name of jesus fresh impartation upon them we are still praying we pray for the government and all the politicians here represented we pray for our traditional rulers in the name of jesus may they be advised by right people every council of ahitophel we conquer we come against it in the name of jesus father the spirit of untimely death that is eating people up on the plateau in the name of jesus we banish that spirit forever the spirit of poverty and hardship eating up the destinies of people regardless of their education regardless their exposure we declare that that spirit comes under judgment in the name of jesus father once again let mantles return to the plateau once again let apostles rise from the plateau once again let evangelists rise from the plateau once again let prophets rise from the plateau hear me whoever has vowed that over his dead body for plateau to rise i command the earth to open and swallow them i'm saying it by the apostolic and the prophetic any human agent in fraternity with darkness that has vowed that this state will not rise we release a sword of judgment let the earth open and swallow them father let the gospel of jesus christ not die on the plateau in the name of jesus as our fathers who have gone ahead of us some of them have died some of them have a few more years they are wrapping up their stay lord raise younger people let there be succession let there be transference of graces raise younger people younger evangelists people of integrity people of character people of fire in the name of jesus now listen the national anthem of nigeria says that the labor of our heroes past should not be in vain it's not just a political statement it is also a spiritual statement let it not be that the labor over the gospel in this land plateau has survived so much and africa as a continent has survived so much therefore we make decree lord remember the blood of those who have died for the gospel remember the blood of those who were killed serving you remember the blood of the matthias on this land because you are a covenant keeping god let their blood not be in vain in the name of jesus we command greater dimensions of development on the plateau we command jobs for our young people in the name of jesus 
I pray for the businessmen on the plateau. May the grace of God rest upon you. In the name of Jesus. There are three spirits that I'm trusting will, will crush out of the plateau. Number one is the spirit of drunkenness. Number two, listen to me. I'm saying this respectfully. The spirit of irresponsibility among young people. And number three, the spirit of lateness is a cause to do things too late. Are we together? 40 years, 50 years still in your father's house. 60 years still not established. In the name of Jesus, let the spirit of drunkenness, drugs, and all kinds of ills and vices, we banish it from the plateau. In the name of Jesus. Number two, the spirit that makes young people to not be responsible. In the name of Jesus, we command that spirit out of our territory. And number three, we pray. Some of our parents in their 20s were already doing exploits in ministry and in business. There were people who were heads of state in this nation in their early 30s. There is no the spirit of lateness, a snail-like achievement. Please, men and women of God, let's take this prayer request back to our altars and let us pray it. It must leave the plateau. Again, we declare the spirit of lateness in this city will banish you forever. And in the name of Jesus, the same way we are standing here, by faith, we make a declaration. Anybody who will divide the church, anybody who will bring enmity among the church, we banish them from this city. In the name of Jesus, please listen to me. The days of church fighting church, pastor fighting pastor, we have agreed that there are many people who need to grow. We have agreed that we are not at the same spiritual level. But let me tell you, be patient and allow people grow. Are we together now? When you see something wrong with your fellow man of God, pray for them. Support them. You hear that armed robbers came to steal from a church. Don't rejoice and clap and say it didn't come to my church. Don't make the mistake of Esther. Mordecai gave her a warning and said, Don't you think if they finish with the Jews, you will be spared? She wanted to make the mistake of Vashti. We are the body of Christ. The pain of one is the pain of everyone. If only one church is growing and the rest are suffering, it is a, it is a loss to everybody. No single church no matter how accurate has the ability to single-handedly bring the global harvest it will be a corporate activity so whether you have 10 members or 2,000 members or 1,000 members we must have mutual honor to ourselves do not disregard those producing results they are not producing results by mistake honor them for the results they command do not downplay the fathers they deserve their honor don't say this is orthodox. This is Pentecostal. Pentecostal charismatics, be careful. Let's stop insulting our fathers in what we call the orthodox churches. They may not be filled with the Holy Ghost as you know. They may not bring revelation, but there is wisdom. They have lasted more than many young people. Respect them for what they have. Don't go around using revelation and anointing to insult the fathers. Some of these men have labored for the gospel. They may not be able to speak well, but they deserve our honor. And hear me, if you have gone ahead to offend any father of faith here, go and look for him and apologize. We are not acting this thing. If it's real revival we are looking for, these are the steps that lead to Bible-based apostolic revival. Are we together? Let me challenge everyone not to demean you but congregations please pray for your men of god 
please respect everyone who names the name of Christ carrying the gospel every man or woman heads of mission agencies heads of churches you have no idea on the attack that the average man faces all of these servants of God will tell you some of them the attack is on their children some of them the attack is on their health while you are sleeping your pastor is awake praying while you are eating he is fasting we must banish sarcasm from the plateau if you hear that a man of God is sick and is in jute don't celebrate and say I, I always didn't like him you should rush there whether you are a church member or not I hear you are a minister of the gospel and you are not feeling fine I may not know you but on behalf of me and my wife let me pay for the bill let me tell you this if we carry this spirit there will be no room for the devil to destroy us here and let me say this finally I apologize for keeping you here sirs for those of us that God has trusted with a bit of revelation look up there is a word of caution knowledge can puff up for some of us who are opening to a bit of visions a bit of prophecy a bit of miracles we are usually the ones who go around with our small world insulting people and mentoring young people to tear down others don't do that let the abundance of knowledge not bring pride let it bring humility and submission so be cautioned prayer groups different para ministry agencies do not sit down tearing down people no don't do that if god opens your eyes and you see dimensions that a church should be entering into and they are not yet entering into go on your knees and pray for them god open their eyes to see that light do not teach the young people to rebel rebellion does not bring glory to god it was that scene of rebellion and treason that threw lucifer from heaven to where he is let us not make that mistake lucifer has taught us that lesson already hallelujah again we declare the church on the plateau is united this is what i want you to do after this conference i like you to use your social media handles and say a united plateau not just politically but even spiritually write it this conference i permit you to do it now we are advocating a united plateau regardless church whatever it is we stand in unity in the name of jesus christ lord make us instruments of your peace where there is hatred let your can you sing it for me lord make us instruments of your peace walls of pride and prejudice shall cease when we are your instruments of peace we declare this prayer over plateau in the presence of the servants of god and in the presence of god's people let this dream and this prophetic word come to pass in the name of the father in the name of the son and in the name of the holy spirit in the name of jesus christ god bless you sirs thank you let's honor them someone please stand to hold their hands while they go thank you sir thank you ma thank you sir god bless you god bless you are you tired praise the name of the lord can you lend me 10 minutes do i have 10 minutes with you so that we'll pray if i don't have a chance to pray for the sick and we stop here i still feel fulfilled because god has done something that is more prophetic than you see praise the name of the lord but i need to at least pray for the sick this is our last session we may not take testimonies but let's declare over the sick and then we're about to pray for the requests praise the name of the lord this is the time you now pray lift your voice and pray father everything i have written here in the name of jesus i wave it goodbye forever water you turn into wine help me open the 
eyes of the blind, there's no one like you. Pray, none like, none like you. Into the darkness, say, into the darkness we shine. Out of the ashes, out of the ashes we rise. There's no of the Lord now no matter how we minister to people we see in parts but this is the most accurate representation of everyone's desire here if there are still people bringing it we have just a few seconds please do it quickly I'm not standing here as one who is better than anyone by any means not at all it is a privilege of the election of grace but hear me I dare to tell you that I have a covenant of answered prayer with God. The Lord left me a covenant. And this is why we do what we are doing. I assure you in the name of the Lord. That if God be God. Everything you drop here. If it is to live your life. It must live your life. If it is to come into your life. It must come into your life. In the next one minute. Wherever you are. Stretch your hands to this request and begin to pray. Father, the end comes. The end comes. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. Shake a pacata barato sikata. Scata barata kata pratekatias. Lekate pros koto parutasia. Miracle, so God. Miracle, so God. In the name of Jesus, turn impossible situations around. And if our God is for us, and if our God is for us. Then you could ever stop us And if our God is with us Then what can stay And if our God If our God is for us And if our God If our God is for us Arise, O oh God, in your power Arise in your majesty Walk the miracles in the life of your people And if our God is with us Then what can stay And if our God Hallelujah. Please agree with me. I want you to agree with me as I pray with a loud amen. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I decree and declare that every impossible situation represented here we turn it into a testimony now we turn them into testimonies now every barren situation receives an answer from heaven now every terminal disease receives an answer from heaven now hear me 
in the name of Jesus prophetically I stand on this request and I declare the way I'm standing on it now every trouble that is above you I bring it under your feet now please believe it please believe it I bring it under your feet now some of you are writing this for your loved ones they are not here may the angel of the lord's presence wherever they are across this nation across the globe may their miracles follow them till it finds them hear me every request here about the salvation or the transformation of a child a husband a wife i declare the goodness of God that leads men to repentance may it follow those individuals till they are saved every spirit that is back of the tragedies represented here we banish that spirit and we command it to live forever the same way you have written this request that is the same way you will write down their answers hear me any man in partnership with the gates of hell to see that this request do not come to pass tonight we release the sword of judgment all across this city let me pray for those who have written requests here listen we are not irresponsible people i know that for many people at least 50 or 60 percent of the prayer requests here i know by wisdom and i know by prophecy that they have to do with finances is that true because the pandemic has dealt a great blow even to the state and to the welfare of other people any christianity and any spiritual advocacy that neglects the well-being of the people is an irresponsible one whilst we are heavenly conscious whilst our attention remains over the things of the spirit we cannot be so careless as to ignore the pain that this pandemic has brought every time there was a pandemic it took prophecy to bring the territory out of financial troubles let me prophesy like elisha in the name of jesus over everyone who has gone down you've lost money in business you've lost money in investments something went wrong with your finances by the god of heaven and by the spirit of prophecy come out of that financial situation come out of that financial situation come out of that financial situation in the name of jesus hallelujah there are times when we have the privilege of listening to the news or talking with a few of your politicians in this city and one of the popular statements on the plateau is Bakudi. why is this project not happening there's no money for it let me tell you this there is a mystery that made the raven to get bread and bring to elijah at brook cherith i stand by the privilege of the apostolic and the prophetic by a means that we may not be able to explain may god send financial help to the plateau we attract investors in their tens and their hundreds very strategic programs that not just empower a few individuals they will empower people from the grassroots to the highest level in the name of Jesus Christ please hear me there are still undeveloped land in this city am I right there are this it is called plateau the beautiful and there are no sentiments about it I don't know anything that does not grow here except you don't plant it may God raise investors I am saying it again who will make this place become one of the agricultural hubs of this nation and even Africa in the name of Jesus Christ 
we pray wisdom upon the government may god give them the grace and the wisdom to manage the available resources in the name of jesus christ if five loaf and two fish fed five thousand people then we speak to the reserves of plateau be multiplied to feed everyone be multiplied to build roads be multiplied to rehabilitate schools in the name of jesus christ everyone here who is in politics and governance first we salute you and we appreciate you for your courage we salute you and we appreciate you it doesn't matter what party i'm not a politician at all we salute you and we appreciate you but then we encourage you in the name of the lord and we pray that the lord will help you whether as commissioners whether as the judiciary as workers in government in the name of jesus probably some of them are following some of them are watching here we pray for the grace and the courage to do what is right we pray that you'll be governed by the fear of the lord we pray that you'll be governed by conscience we pray that you'll be governed by a sense of posterity may god grant us grace to do what our children will be proud of tomorrow in the name of jesus christ the temptation for self-centeredness the temptation for me myself and my tribesmen in the name of jesus we banish we declare grace to conquer that temptation plateau state is for all of us and until we all rejoice we are not yet there in the name of jesus christ let me speak over the sick and the final impartation our time is gone i sincerely apologize if you are trusting god for a miracle in your body wherever you are please lay your hands there you don't have to come out you just lay your hands please lay your hands if it's a part of your body you cannot touch please do well to just pl place your hand on your chest i believe in miracles yesterday i worship people sang thank you please burn it please burn it some of the things there are private and personal and you can do well to set them on fire the same way it is burning that's how every devil that stands against you will roast to death in the name of jesus hallelujah let's pray father in the name of jesus there are people standing here with terminal diseases others standing here with death sentences i see some of you lifting photos of your loved ones who probably are in the hospital lord you are a miracle god a miracle worker we have thought so much about that right now in the name of jesus christ even for those of you standing i see you those standing at the overflow standing on the trucks we are seeing you i like you to believe even as we pray in the name that is above all names every spirit that is back of any infirmity we sanction you by the word of the lord and we declare your power broken over every sick one here in jesus name be delivered right now in the name of jesus now i declare every infirmity every disease from the crown of your head even to the soles of your feet be healed right now in the name of jesus peptic ulcer be healed in the name of jesus everyone here with sickle cell anemia we change that genotype now we change that blood group now in the name of jesus please believe it every kind of cardiovascular challenge we correct it now by the power of the holy ghost every kind of blindness partial blindness complete blindness be healed now in the name of jesus migraine headaches be healed in the name of jesus deafness on one or both of your ears we command them open now in the name of jesus 
everyone here who is barren it doesn't matter what the reason is according to the time of life return as a joyful mother of children high blood pressure we curse you now in the name of jesus sugar diabetes we curse you in the name of jesus every kind of malignant growth around your body lumps around the breast area fibroids around the abdominal area we command you shrink and die now in the name of jesus hiv be healed now in the name of jesus cancers of all sorts ulcers of all sorts be healed now in the name of jesus heart palpitations in the name of jesus be healed now i'm seeing someone you get so dizzy you can't even stand in the sun for a few minutes you begin to gasp it's like your breath is leaving you the lord is healing you right now in the name of jesus christ was it yesterday or today the lord healed a lady with the issue of blood i'm seeing many people having those kinds of irregularities in the name of jesus be healed right now every kind of bone condition every kind of bone condition that has led to any sort of deformity whatsoever be corrected now in the name of jesus and let me declare over you if there is anyone here that the spirit of death is upon and the devil is already planning that it will be said about you survived by in the name of jesus christ i command death to pass over you be healed in the name of jesus whether i mention your case or not in the name of jesus be healed right now and the sickness that leaves you even after this conference this crusade may it never return to you in jesus name for those of you who are standing in for your loved ones holding their photos lifting their faces on your phones i can see them in the name of jesus may the power that raised christ from the dead visit them in the hospitals bringing healing and perfect soundness in the name of jesus christ hallelujah now please open your heart for the impartation this will be my last session and we're done I believe in impartation when Saul lost his father's donkey the Bible says they could not find the donkey and all three of them went in search of a prophet called Samuel and then the Bible declares that when they met Samuel at the gate of the city Samuel said you go up and I will tell you what is in your heart listen as soon as Saul met Samuel three things happened number one the donkey that was missing for a very long time mysteriously found its way there is restoration with the prophetic it can restore let me speak to you everything you have lost relationships finances mantles possibilities your job by the god of heaven and here at this crusade in the name of jesus i declare supernatural restoration hear me if you have the faith to believe i declare that 90 days from now within three months by the god of heaven like it happened when the ark of god was taken to the house of obed edom it was in three months god turned the life of that family around in three months may god bring supernatural restoration hallelujah now watch this samuel told saul 
that the donkey you have been looking for has been found blessing number two he said on your way returning you will meet three strangers holding two loaf of bread they will salute you that is honor and they will give to you that is favor let me speak over your life the proof of favor is not money the proof of favor is the loyalty of the hearts of men in the name of jesus christ both honor and favor may my god allow it rest on your life now honor gives you visibility favor gives you access honor gives you visibility favor gives you access i prophesied honor gives you visibility and favor gives you access number three now you don't have to bring anyone under the anointing out whether you're an usher or not if anyone falls under the anointing just help them where they are so they don't hurt themselves it says you will come to the garrison of the philistines that when you come there a grace you did not leave home with will return with you and when they saw saul prophesying they said is saul also one of the prophets listen to me impartation is powerful it has been abused but when the anointing is administered within the jurisdiction of balance and scripture it can work wonders in the life of the recipients i am a product of many anointings there is a grace for speed there is a grace listen i want to release that grace that in one year a man can achieve what in a decade he's not been able to achieve i pray for you i stretch my hands from my right to my left from the front to the back my god and my king and my savior upon someone in this place help them please may the grace for speed come on you take that grace take that grace take that grace supernatural achievements on the plateau in the name of jesus speed in business speed in ministry in the name of jesus receive that grace hear me there is a grace for favor i call it the esther anointing esther chapter 2 and verse 15 the b part it says and esther obtained favor in the sight of all them that looked upon her esther chapter 2 verse 17 and the king loved esther more than all the virgins and he made her queen instead of Vashti. exodus chapter 3 verse 21 i will give these people favor in the sight of the egyptians and it shall come to pass that when ye go ye shall not go empty i declare by this impartation of favor the season of emptiness in your life emptiness in your church emptiness in your business emptiness in family in career it comes to end in the name of jesus take that anointing take that anointing take that anointing favor in the morning favor in the afternoon favor in the evening in the name of jesus just help those under the anointing the last prayer because thou has love righteousness and hated wickedness it says therefore god even i god hath anointed you with an oil of gladness that sets you above your fellows let me tell you how it works there is a serious prayer i want to pray for you right now it's called the ministry of destiny help us listen to me all blessings come from god through men to men please hold on in this kingdom who hates you does not matter but who loves you matters do not say men do not matter uh -uh. all blessings your prayer requests some of them written here some of them they are in the hands of a man one signature help this person that's it it can change don't downplay men 
when you're honoring God as the king seated on the throne, that's fine. But with the dynamics of excelling in the cosmos, you cannot ignore men and rise. My life today is a product of the endorsement, the advocacy of men. There are four kinds of people you will always need in your life. Number one, they are called divine connectors. They cannot help you, but they know who can help you. The slave girl and the king and Naaman, she could not have the, she didn't have the power to help him, but she could take him to a prophet. The key to receiving from divine connectors is discernment. Because many times they will come in a form that you may not appreciate. Number two, you need men of influence. Men who have labored through their track record to become gatekeepers of industries, gatekeepers of mountains. One endorsement. Joseph, I know you can interpret dreams, but until Pharaoh calls you, you will remain in the prison. The Bible says, and the king sent for Joseph and they brought him out of his dungeon. You need men of influence. It, the body of Jesus Christ, your Jesus, was hanging on the cross there. No prayer warrior's prayer could bring it down. It took a man of influence called Joseph of Arimathea who used his influence with the government of the day to bring the body of Jesus down. You need men of influence as a pastor, as a businessman, as families. Number three, you need gifted men. Gifted men will minimize wastages in your life. You need men of skill. David was a man of skill. He didn't just kill Goliath because he was anointed. The Benjamites, historically speaking, were people who had mastered the art of the sling. It was said they could divert arrows with the sling. You need skillful people. One skillful man, their business people, will save you from paying salaries of 100 people without results. You need gifted people. The greatest corporations in the world are full of very gifted people. Maximum output. Output that justifies the resources committed. And then number four, still talking of destiny helpers, you need, gift, you need burden bearers. There are people who will be in your life not for your going forward, but to keep you from going backward. They are called burden bearers. Woe betides a leader who does not have burden bearers in your dark days. If you are Jesus and you do not have Simon of Cyrene, you may not get to Golgotha, even though you are Jesus. There are many leaders who have served people for years, but all they had in their lives were gifted people who were taken, taken, taken. And when days came when they needed help, there was nobody. Burden bearers are not looking for your money. They are not looking for anointing. Their assignment is to be with you there. Ruth told Naomi, your God will be my God. Your people will be my people. If we die, we die here. Burden bearers do not stand with you alone. They die with you. This is a message already. Because I'm going to speak it over your life. There are CEOs right now. You had all kinds of people. But when your company plunged down, they left you alone. Where were the 5,000 people that Jesus fed when he was on the cross? Where were the recipients of his miracle? Where was the woman with the issue of blood when he was on the cross? They even preferred to release a criminal. There are many parents today who serve people, raise people in their homes. Many people came from the villages. They went down to university, but in old age they are alone. There is nobody to stand by them. They are sick in the hospital and they are the mercy of doctors and nurses. You need the prayer I'm praying for you. So that when I declare destiny helpers, I'm talking of divine connectors. I'm talking of men of influence. I'm talking of gifted people. And I'm talking of burden bearers. Are you ready to receive? In the name of Jesus, these four groups of helpers, I stand by the God of heaven and I declare over you, especially as leaders, spiritual leaders, political leaders, business leaders, may they show up even in this season in the name of Jesus. May they show up in this season in the name of Jesus. Now I pray for you. There is a grace for signs and wonders. There is a grace that grants you the unction to pray. 
many of you it was not like this when you started with god but as it is your prayer life has gone down and this affects even preachers your word life your fire for god when you started it was not this way you could fast and pray but some of you the distractions of life some of you may be children i want to pray a rekindling of fire those days on the plateau they used to sing a song do not let my light go cold i'm crying out light the fire again i pray for you anyone whose spiritual life has gone down listen even if you receive money even if you receive political titles if your spiritual life is down you are not all right i pray for you fresh fire upon your prayer altar fresh fire upon your prayer altar the grace to pray the grace to fast the grace to intercede the grace to take god serious receive it in the name of jesus the grace and the courage to edit wrong associations i decree and declare don't say we've been like that anybody who will not be a contributor to kingdom come nor the betterment of your destiny i separate you from them forever in the name of jesus christ return back with signs grace for signs and wonders return back with the grace to heal the sick return back with the grace to raise the dead return back with the grace to cast out demons i agree by faith with every man of god here the next time you climb your altar fire upon that altar evangelistic fire healing fire deliverance fire in the name of jesus praise the name of the lord now let me make the altar call i believe in jesus and i believe he's the only one who is able to save you have stood for long we have tabernacled in this place right from saturday two sessions on sunday one session yesterday night the final session this night and even though we have celebrated unprecedented manifestations of salvation the bible lets us know that every time god's people are gathered there are always people who are sent the lord himself sends daily as many as should be saved tonight is our final night until we meet another time but give me the honor of making this one last call some of you are standing on the truck i see you outside the fence some of you are in the overflows some of you are right in this this space outside and whilst you heard me teach the holy ghost kept convicting you that it's time to make it right with jesus what shall it profit a man the bible says if he gains the whole world and loses his soul i'm about to make a very serious altar call for two groups of people number one those who are committing themselves to jesus for the first time number two those who are saying apostle i have been with the things of god but for some reason my life has gone haywire please let's minimize movement there's still one more important announcement i'll make after this but wherever you are we have just two minutes for you use this opportunity and do not lose out i'd like you to leave your seat and i want you to run as i count one to five please come and stand here it's time to make it right with jesus whilst we celebrate you with a hand clap unashamedly leave your friends your family and come and stand you don't have to kneel please stand for space just are we celebrating what jesus is doing one please run and stand here lord i give you my heart i give you my soul two i live for you alone every breath that i take every moment i'm away have your way lord have your way four are you coming Lord, I give you my heart, I give you my soul, I live for you, alone, 
quickly. If you're joining them, please hurry up. Please hurry up. Every moment I'm away. Lord, have your way. Lord, have your way in me. Now, thank you very much, all of you. Keep coming, those who are coming, come very quickly. This is our last session together. It is a noble thing. Just, just suspend filling the phone for a minute as I lead you to pray. The Bible says, There is no name under heaven given unto man by which we must be saved. As I lead you to pray this prayer, please lift your right hand and I'd like you to repeat after me loud and clear. Jesus is here. You're not reciting a poem. Jesus is in our midst. Say after me, Lord Jesus. One more time, say, Lord Jesus. I love you with all my heart. Tonight, I have heard your word. I believe that you are Lord, you are Savior, you are King. I hand over my life completely to you in exchange for your own life therefore i declare from tonight that the power of sin of satan is broken over my life forever i receive eternal life into my spirit i receive the gift of righteousness the abundance of grace and I declare that from tonight and forever I go forward ever and backward never amen keep your hands lifted father we thank you it's an honor again to present these ones as trophies to you we thank you because no man who comes to you goes back the same Lord I pray by the authority of Scripture that their sins are forgiven I declare that the Lord gives you a new beginning from tonight in the name of Jesus I declare that the power of sin the power of Satan is broken over your life that you begin a new walk with God I administer the peace of God that surpasses all understanding let it garrison your heart in the name of Jesus from today you go from glory to glory and from grace to grace in Jesus name I pray amen please not look up all of you i know that our time is fast spent i apologize but then i would request there uh, a few counselors waving their hands you'll see them waving their hands all of you in concert please move to my left which is your right and um, they'll receive you you'll complete your form have a few information and you'll be back god bless you let's celebrate them once they go Thank you for watching our entire video today. If you feel you can bless someone, please join us and spread the gospel by sharing this video on your social media.